The Mermaid's Glass by Henry A. Beers. Read for LibriVox.org by Lars Rolander. The Mermaid's Glass. Twas down among the thimble isles that strew for many liquid miles. The waters of Long Island Sound, our yacht lay in a cove around, the rocky isles with cedars green, and channels winding in between. And here a low black reef was spread, and there a sunken nigger head dimpled the surface of the tide from one tall island's cliffy side. We heard the shaggy goats that fed, the gulls wheel screaming overhead or settled in a snowy flock far out upon the lonely rock, which like a pillar seemed to show some drowned acropolis below. Meanwhile in the warm sea about, with many a plunge and jolly shout, our crew enjoyed their morning bath. The hairy skipper in his wrath lay cursing on the gunwale's rim. He loved a dip, but could not swim. So now and then, with plank afloat, he'd struggle feebly round the boat, and over the side climb puffing in, scraping wide areas off his skin. Then lie and sun each hirsute limb, once more upon the gunwale's rim, and shout with curses unavailing, Come out, there's wind, let's do some sailing. A palm leaf hat that here and there bobbed on the water showed him where some venturous swimmer outward bound escaped beyond his voice's sound all heedless of their skipper's call one group fought for the upset yawl the conqueror sat astride the keel and deftly pounded with his heel the hands that clutched his citadel which showed at distance like the shell round which unseen the naiad train sport naked on the middle main myself had drifted far away meanwhile from where the sailboat lay till all unbroken i could hear the waves low whisper in my ear and at the level of mine eye the blue vibration met the sky sometimes upon my back i lay and watched the clouds while i and they were wafted effortless along sudden i seemed to hear a song yet not a song but some weird strain as though the inarticulate main had found a voice whose human tone interpreted its own dull moan its foamy hiss its surfy roar its gentle lapping on the shore its noise of subterranean waves that grumble in the sea-cliff caves its swish among the drifting miles of gulf weed from the indian isles all all the harmonies were there which ocean makes with earth or air turning i saw a sunken ledge bared by the ebb along whose edge the matted seaweed dripped thereon betwixt the dazzle of the sun and the blue shimmer of the sea i saw or else i seemed to see a mermaid crooning a wild song combing with arm uplifted long the hair that shed its meshes black down the slope whiteness of her back she held a mirror in her hand wherein she viewed sky sea and land her beauty's background and its frame but now as toward the rock i came all suddenly across the glass some startling image seemed to pass for her song rose into a scream over her shoulders one swift gleam of eyes unearthly fell on me and twixt the flashing of the sea and the blind dazzle of the sun i saw the rock but thereupon she sat no longer against the blue 
only across the reef there flew one snow-white turn and vanished too but coasting that lone island round among the slippery kelp i found a little oval glass that lay upturned and flashing in the ray of the down-looking sun thereto with scarce believing eyes i drew and took it captive a while there i rested in the mermaid's lair and felt the merry breeze that blew and watched the sharpies as they flew and snuffed the sea's breath thick with brine and basked me in the sun's warm shine then with my prize i made my way once more to where the sailboat lay i kept the secret and the glass by day across its surface pass the transient shapes of common things which chance within its oval brings but when at night i strive to sound the darkness of its face profound again i seem to hear the breeze that curls the waves on summer seas i see the isles with cedars green the channels winding in between the coves with beaches of white sand the reefs where warning spindles stand and through the multitudinous shimmer of waves and sun again the glimmer of eyes unearthly falls on me deep with the mystery of the sea End of poem. This poem is in public domain.